Well, I think after Sid's reading the gospel that I'll just go sit down. Uh, <laughs> that was very powerful. I'd like to take as my text today, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. I was in Silver Spring, Maryland this week, attending a meeting. I was sitting in the hotel lobby. I was actually working on this sermon when I noticed a man in military fatigues walking to the elevator on crutches. One of his legs was in a splint. I went back to work. I looked up again to see another young man walking uncertainly with a cane, a huge scar across the side of his shaven head. He had a desert camo pack on his back. Another few minutes, a man missing a leg, pushing his wheelchair along with the other foot. That foot was clad in a GI boot. Well, God had gotten my attention. As I thought about it, Silver Spring is a straight shot down the bus line from Walter Reed Army Hospital. And you may remember that a couple of years ago, it came out that wounded Iraq vet war veterans who had graduated to outpatient rehabilitation were being housed on the grounds of Walter Reed in vermin and mold-infested barracks. The Secretary of the Army actually lost his job over that. Well, some of those vets are now being housed in the Silver Spring Hilton. The Silver Spring Hilton isn't a great hotel, but it's definitely better than the barracks. How do I make sense of a world where old men send young men and women to war, to fight and kill one another over a piece of land, over a disagreement, over an idea, where when those young people are maimed, the brass would allow them to be housed in quarters they wouldn't think fit for their dogs. How do I confront such human waywardness, such human suffering? Where do I start? Well, one of the privileges of being a preacher is that I'm forced to examine and to wrestle with my own theology. One of the drawbacks for you and for me is that I have to do it in public. So, here goes. We live in a pluralistic world. We're faced with a clamor of voices, all sorts of answers, all sorts of views, all sorts of paths. What do we do? When my kids were younger and had questions, I used to tell them that we're only responsible for our own tradition. This isn't to deny the wisdom to be gained from other traditions. Far from it. Put together all of human wisdom over all the ages since we first stood up on our hind legs can only barely begin to understand God. We need to be responsible for our own traditions, though, because if we aren't responsible for our own tradition, who will be? We all know the story of the blind man and the elephant. The elephant is truth, or the whole picture, or God. Each blind person feels a portion of the elephant and reports to the others, an elephant is like the trunk of a tree. 
Or an elephant is long and supple, like a snake. The piece of the story that's usually missing in the traditional telling, which, em which emphasizes our inadequacy, is that if the blind men were to put their heads together, they could construct a picture of the elephant. Certainly not complete, but better than like a tree or like a snake. If we're not responsible for our own tradition, the elephant will be missing its trunk or its ears or its legs. Humanity will be infinitely impoverished in its understanding of God. If we are not responsible for our own tradition, who will be? In addition, if we're responsible for our own tradition, if we learn our tradition, we'll always have a starting place, always have some anchor in what can sometimes be a terrible world. <laughs> 